So this is a particular earthen dam and uh, this earthen dam uh, what I have done is I have modeled an internal core and I have modeled your uh, filters and I have modeled dam casing along with the foundation as well. So what I have done is uh, I have given some material properties using different constitutive models and I have ran, uh, ran for uh, seepage analysis and a stress analysis. So I'll be showing you different results, how you can obtain the results uh, in the software easily. So I will be showing you the inputs now. Let's say for internal core, I went for modified cam clay. I have applied for a uh, very impermeable clay membrane. So uh, you can see the elastic modulus, unit weight, Poisson ratio, and the most importantly, uh, your permeability coefficients of for your clay material. So that has been entered in here, and I have chosen uh, undrained stiffness. And in the nonlinear material, I have I need to go for specification of your uh, slope of consolidation line or consolidation line and your critical uh, state line as well, so that the software gets to know that the real properties of your clay so that is nothing but your modified cam clay model so i have already applied it if you are having your pre-consolidation stress we can apply that or else we can go for ocr that is your o consolidation ratio so if you provide both the software considers your pre-consolidation pressure and it will run for the same otherwise it goes for o consolidation ratio so that is for internal core and for filters and for uh, your uh, dam casing, I went for a more coulomb, more coulomb material model. So that's your elastic modulus. We got a unit weight for the same, that is a 20 for filter. And then we went for uh, uh, the like uh, the permeability coefficients are some huge values. So I went for, uh, let's say, a uh, like a sandy layer, or you can go for a, a small size boulders as well in the filters. And we got a cohesion value of zero because that is not uh, uh, because this is what we need because we don't need any cohesion in the filter material. So the cohesion is zero and a friction angle of 33. So whatever the values which you obtain from the experimental all needs to be uh, defined in here. So before defining, we need to go for geometry material, geometric modeling. So what I do is I will hide all the mesh sets and I will be showing you my model. So this is the model that has been made and this is your upstream water level and we got your dam casings, internal core and these are your filters. Sorry, uh, one minute. And these are your filters. Yeah. So, and again, uh, we got a cutoff wall as well. So, that has been done. And so, uh, after going for your complete geometric modeling, I went for meshing. So, this is your complete mesh that has been obtained using uh, different mesh tools like a tetrahedral geometry for the same, tetrahedral elements for the same. So, now uh, what I have done is I have applied an uh, sulfate. So, using sulfate present in the tab, I went for sulfate, and later on, I have applied some constraints. So that is your constraint. We got auto constraint in here. Just by pressing your auto constraint, each and every element will be something having like this. Yeah, this bottom part will be completely fixed and your vertical part will be normally fixed. So that is the features that needs to be present for any geotechnical uh, uh, model and that is automated in Midas GTS NX. And now I ran, I have applied a nodal head of like around let's say I will be showing you the nodal head yeah so I have applied a nodal head like around 17 meters on the upstream side so all the elements or all my surfaces on the upstream side has been selected and I have applied a 17 meter nodal head so that is my total head basically if you want to apply we can go for pressure head as well and if you're having some transient seepage so what we do is we will apply the transient seepage in terms of a function that is a change in nodal head with respect to your time so that is how uh, we apply it 
and once you have applied it we need to go for analysis okay similar display Uh, sorry, one of your engineers is having a trouble. Uh, we just wait for uh, 10 seconds to see whether the soft uh, means the PC can able to cope up with the same. So uh, uh, anyone can able to see the earthen dam model that has been modeled and uh, that is being displayed. Uh, yeah, so you can able to see it, right? Yeah. So thanks. For, I will just brief what I have done in here. So this is my internal core and in the internal core I have given a modified cam clay material model and for dam casing and filters I have provided more coulomb material model even for the bedrock I have provided the more coulomb material model and then I have applied a nodal head on the upstream side that is of 17 meters so that is my uh, complete uh, total head so if you're having a pressure head uh, value you can even provide the pressure head so basically you are providing the water table in the form of your pressure heads that is your nodal head basically so using them uh, using that we will go for seepage analysis so in here we go to analysis case and in the general tab we need to select the solution type so in the solutions we got different types of analysis and I am choosing a seepage analysis that is your steady state analysis so we go in there and we directly check and uh, go for a steady state seepage analysis and we will apply the nodal head by directly drag and drop in here so we just provide you with some name and in the analysis control you can control the convergence criteria in analysis control so i have already generated a material uh, sorry analysis case and this is my analysis case so even you can go for output control as well so what type of results that you are interested in can be directly uh, enabled in here so that there will be very less time for analysis but even let's say the cpg analysis take very less time so you can check on all the cases and now I'll be showing you the results so when you go for post processing mode I have already done the analysis I will be showing you the results what type of results which we can obtain from the software so let's say now I, now I have run a steady state seepage analysis so I can find the total head how it is being varied in the entire model and I can go for pore pressure head flow rate applied seepage flow reaction seepage flow everything and now even I can find the hydraulic gradients along X Y and Z directions and I can even find the flow velocities so let's see all the results uh, one by one uh, in the very first case I would like to show you the seepage flow paths so this is my flow path I will directly go to the flow path uh, I need to choose the type of analysis I have given so there are there might be many analysis cases but I need to choose a specific analysis so go to steady state analysis so that has been performed by me so I will be choosing particular node uh, here. here here you can see all the flow paths how the water from upstream down side is going into the downstream side and this is your flow path basically so when you go for front view what you can see is uh, all the water means all the flow path are going through the your uh, 
underneath your impermeable strata so you need to go for even high cutoff wall or you need to choose your uh, uh, filters accordingly so you can see some of your flow paths are directly going through the filter and again uh, again going through the bedrock and again directly coming out of your like uh, downstream so even this is what you can see yeah so i will animate the case you can get to have a great idea now so here you can see this is how the flow path are being done the flow path is being done basically so what we do is now we will see the equipotential lines and even ferratic lines how the ferratic line uh, is being obtained using the finite element method will be shown to you now so let's say uh, go to your uh, multi-step iso value surface present in the software and what i do is so in any of your ferratic line or in at any point of your ferratic line what you find is the pore pressure head will be zero so that's why i will be selecting the pore pressure head and i will making the value as zero so i will ask the software to plot the area which is having zero pore pressure head yeah so this is my zero pore pressure head so this is my ferratic line this is how it is changing from upstream to downstream. You can see a drawdown when it comes to your impermeable membrane, that is your clay internal core. You can see the ferratic line and there is a drawdown in case of your impermeable clay membrane. And now, and now we will see the equipotential lines. So let's say we go for total head and we can have many total heads so that's nothing but your equipotential lines that is being varied from 0 to 17 meters because 17 is the value that has been provided by me to the software in the form of total head so i can go for 5 or i can go for 6 so this is 6 equipotential line the all the points where you're having a head of 6 that is being shown when you go for 10 sorry so then the 10 it is passing through your impermeable clay strata and then when you go for 12 so that's how and when you go for 15 this is how yeah and when you go for 17 what happens is it will be directly coming onto your upstream so on this upstream i have provided the value of 17 meters so now what i do is i will be showing you all the equipotential lines in one single frame so just go to the front view i'll be directly selecting the total head so this is the variation of my total head i'll be changing the fringe and i'll be changing the line so these are different lines of equipotential lines and this is how you can see in the software yeah so according to your uh, legend you can come to know which which one is uh, which color is uh, for the particular value and now this is all in accordance with your uh, c page analysis uh, i'll be showing you some other results as well so we can get the flow rate yeah i forgot to show the flow rate so here when you directly click on a flow rate you can find some uh, amount of water that is being seeped away and you can find a negative value which represents your outflow a positive value which represents your inflow so the maximum value which is being shown is a positive value so that is your inflow and the, the minimum value which is your negative value is being shown that is your outflow and even at any particular section you can find that value so I'll be showing how so here we go to flow quantity we will add a particular case and I will be selecting nodes let's say one the name of your section is one I will select all the nodes in here so all the nodes at this particular section has been selected and I will say add so just close this one and when you click on one and you say calculate so you can find amount that is being seeped away so here that is your mm cube per second when you can you can play along with the results and uh, we can change the units even in the at any point of end that's the idea in here you can go it's go for feet cube 
per second you can go for meter cube per second or centimeter cube per second so whatever you wish so that's about your flow rate and even you can come to have your flow velocity level your x direction flow velocities your y direction and your z direction and even your xy plane that will be like your shear plane so xy plane yz plane and your z xz z plane even in all the planes you can find your flow velocities and the flow velocity resultant so on a whole the resultant flow velocities can also be fine not in one directions but in uh, that's the a combination of your all directions that the resultant flow and uh, in the similar in the same model i have run for a stress analysis as well so i'll be showing you the stress analysis now so what i have done is i went for a construction stage analysis for the definition for running my stress analysis so here you can see a construction stage set with the name of stress analysis i will just press and go for editing so in here when you go for analysis stage what i have done is i went for a construction stage in the very first stage i'll be having only bedrock in the second stage i'll be having all my internal code dam and my filters everything being placed and on this particular uh, like model i have applied a water pressure and that water pressure is because of the water level that has been already modeled so i will be showing you the water level yeah this is your water level yes we can separately calculate your uh, uh, flow rate from your foundation and embankment separately so whatever nodes which we can uh, go for selection only the results at that nodes will be calculated and that nodes will be displayed one of the engineer is asking whether we can separately calculate the flow rate through foundation and in the embankment separately or not yeah we can go for calculation i'll be showing it how uh, one minute I'll go for your post processing mode and this is your flow quantity so let's say i'm selecting all the nodes on the foundation only nodes on the foundation so these are the nodes on the foundation so whatever nodes which is being selected will be uh, considered and the calculation of flow rate on that particular point will be considered so on, on the foundation let's go for addition so here there is a foundation and i will say calculate it so now it is showing some flow rate at that particular section because i have considered only nodes on the foundation so you can find the value for the foundation now we will go for dam casing that is nothing but your embankment go for front view again i will select some points uh, here let's say so these are my nodes at a particular section and this might be my dam casing or my embankment let's say add close now i will say calculate and it is zero because all the values all the flow parts which you can see is so here we have got on on the embankment which we got is we got a zero value because all the flow rate is coming through your filters for from the filters your water is being uh, discharged away and there is no water coming onto your coming through your dam casing so that's what we can infer from here so even the flow parts has shown you the same yeah so now uh, i have run a stress analysis as well in the same model and what i have done is in the very first stage i went for my bedrock development so only the bedrock will be placed in the as an in situ stage for my first analysis first stage basically and in the second stage i activated my dam casing my filters my internal core as well and now in the very second uh, stage i even activated my water pressure because of the a uh, water level that is being considered so there is an option called automatically consideration of water pressure so this is what i have done automatically considered water pressure and i have uh, so this is what we can do and now we will see the results accordingly so this is a stress analysis 
and in the very first stage I have activated only my bedrock and because of the cell fate of the bedrock that I have un I have made the displacement zero because bedrock has already been settled because of which cell fate we don't want the displacement so I made cleared I cleared those displacements so that's why you can see zero displacement in here and now we will see the second stage where there is a, a displacement because of your water pressure and because of your uh, dam self weight. So this is your total displacements. So you can see the contours variation. Uh, you can change from smooth to continuous, so continuous to fringe as well. This is how you can change the values. So this will be your total displacement and you can change the meet from meters to millimeters and so on and you can go for uh, like your lateral displacement vertical uh, displacements x y and z as well so z indicates here vertical displacement that is nothing but your settlement so here you global axis your z and you can find the settlement like around uh, 59 mm and now we go for solid stresses. So what are the different stresses which we can obtain from the software is you can get the shear stresses along each plane. You can get the normal stresses. You can get the principal stresses. You can get the maximum shear. So this is your maximum shear stress. So I'll change the units from kilonewton meter. Yeah, you can see the maximum of 138 kilonewton per meter square. Now I will we can even see a plastic status. So when you get on for plastic status because of the stress because of the sulfate and water pressure there is a, some part in your entire model which is going through into your plastic zone. So all the red zone is implementing that this particular area is going through the plastic failure plastic zone. So nothing but your plastic uh, like uh, because we have used morculum and modified morculum both are uh, uh, plastic materials. And now uh, we can go for pore stress. You can go for excessive pore stress. So when there is some um, seepage, you can find. So not seepage because of the stress analysis, you can find the pore excessive pore stress as well because of excessive pore water. So even that can be fine. So whenever your void is completely filled with water, you can find some excessive pore water pressure. So that is what we are seeing it now. And we can find equivalent strain. So uh, how it is uh, str means how the displacement is being done so that is what it is indicating so all these are the different results from the stress analysis so basically you will be finding the displacements and you will be finding the stresses from where and uh, you can also find the strengths from where you basically get to know the behavior of your model whether it is safe or not and that is about your strengths and stresses and now we will go to another model where I have run for your slope stability analysis and later on I will be going for my time history analysis. So this is an, an, another model here. Uh, I have run for a slope stability analysis. The materials are the same, but I, I have given a morculum material to my internal core because modified more cam clay is not supported for uh, like your slope stability analysis so in any software it doesn't provide you with this solution so that's why I went for a more column so go to analysis and what I have done in here is I ran two analysis that is in the very first stage only because of the self weight I have run the analysis and I got the failure plane and I got it uh, like factor safety only for the self weight in the second analysis, I went for an um, construction stage analysis where I went for a coupled analysis where in the very first stage I went for a seepage analysis and in the second stage I have considered the stress analysis along with the slope. That means whatever the stress, uh, whatever the stress variation because of the seepage is being done will be considered into the second stage where I'm running a stress and where I'm running my slope stability analysis. So that's why I'll be showing you, you the both variation. So when I ran only slope stability analysis, I got a factor of safety like around 2.45. Now I'll be showing you the, the failure surface. So this is how you can find a failure surface. In both the cases, you can find the same. 
and in here you can find more because underneath it there are some filters because of the filter you can find all your circular failure surface is passing through your filters because filters are actually uh, or very loose means very loose because it is not having cohesion so because of that it actually triggers the slope failure and this is how your failure occurs now what I show is I will be showing you the deformer shape so it is like exaggerated view which is uh, with I am showing you and when I go for actual deformation you can find so this is my actual deformation and what I do is I will also show Uh, sorry sir uh, actually I am getting a message from mr. Rose Rosa uh, actually I think uh, there is some a network issue with uh, mine or else US because uh, whatever video I am showing you that is not displayed for you so what I do is I'm recording the each and every point and the se section which I'm uh, showing you so we will be sharing that particular video with you so you can actually uh, see how your complete GTS NX along with the different projects has been dealt here sorry for the inconvenience and uh, so this is about only slope stability analysis you got a factor of safety like around 2.45 and uh, what I do is I have run an another analysis so that is your stress seepage coupled analysis so let's say Uh, so there is one question from an engineer uh, what it is can we do the interaction and settlement analysis of conduits under embankment using GTSNX yes we can do it sir I have actually modeled a particular conduit under an earthen, um, uh, earthen dam I'll be showing you that model as well uh, so in this particular analysis uh, I went for a seepage analysis in the very first case and in the second case I went for a stress analysis along with the slope so where I got a factor of safety of only 2.15 means there is a, a little variation uh, between your slope only slope analysis and with your coupled analysis so because of this you can find there is an uh, variation because of your seepage onto your slope stability so we will see the fa uh, failure surface in in case of your coupled analysis you can see yes you can see only failure surface that is being formed onto your right side that is nothing but onto your downstream because from that upstream to downstream you can see you can find the flow paths and because of that the seepage pressure is being activated in here and you can find the uh, displacement more and nothing but your slope failure so I will be showing you the flow paths for this particular model it is very similar to your previous model but for the second case where stress seepage and slope has been activated but here I have considered a more cool material and which is having uh, different material pro properties I mean the same material properties but not a modified cam clay here this is the animated view and I'll be going for uh, again for a line So on a ferratic line, uh, your total pressure, pore pressure head will be zero. That's what is being shown. So this is my ferratic line. Again, you can see there is a drawdown because the permeability is very low in the internal core. So that's what we required and that's what we obtained. So this is all about the uh, slope stability analysis. And now what I show is I'll be showing you a conduit uh, which has been modeled using the Midas GTS NX and along with the earthen dam so yeah this is a, your particular model I'm just hiding the water level yeah this is your particular model in this particular model what have I have done is I went on for a terrain geometry maker I have modeled a terrain so this is my terrain it is very irregular terrain as how you find in real this is like a hilly area and uh, here I am going for an earthen dam so this is my earthen dam so the middle portion where you can find a, a color change is my earthen dam I will show you all the uh, all my mesh sets separately we'll go to model and this is my a bedrock and I'm just hiding it 
and this is my complete ethan dam and in the very bottom we got a conduit so here you can see that conduit is like a, a started from here and we ended up here and what i will be showing you is i'll be showing you the dam casing so that will be i'm just hiding the dam casing so yeah you can see this is my internal core and these are my filters i'm just hiding my filters as well and this is my internal core i'm hiding my internal core again yeah these two bodies or your uh, uh, let's say we can go for concrete bed or let's say if you're having any rock bed so that or rock beds. but in this current model i have chosen as a rock beds so i'll be showing i'm just damp foundation so these are your damp foundation and this is your conduit and what i have considered in here is uh, we can go for uh, either concrete lining for your con conduit or your steel lining but basically we go for concrete lining and uh, this is my conduit soil i'm just hiding the soil and now we got only lining so this is my concrete lining so on the complete outside of your conduit wherever you got a soil so on the surrounding it i applied a conduit uh, like concrete so that's your concrete lining and this is how your concrete lining looks like so on this conduit you can find your stresses you can find your bending moment diagram so that you can go for your design structural design basically so and this is your entire model you can see the starting of your conduit on the down up down sorry upstream and at the ending of your conduit on your downstream right yeah so what I will be showing you is I will be going for analysis cases that has been run using this software. I went for a construction stage analysis. So I will be showing you the construction stages now. Yeah, this is my construction stages. I went for a stress analysis. So in the very first stage, there is only bedrock or only the soil present in the real, like this is my hilly area. So only that thing is being present. This is my complete hilly area. And in the second stage, I went for a dam and conduit construction. So this is my dam, everything, the dam is con con constructed. If you're if you're going for more stages, like uh, uh, only 10 meters of my internal core in the first stage, and then, then go for my 30 meters, and then filters, you can even uh, model your complete case in such a different construction stages as well. But in the current model, I have modeled the entire dam in the very one stage. So that's the idea I'm uh, just going for. And in the next stage, so these are the only two stages and what I applied is and even I applied some water pressure onto your conduit. I will be showing you only conduit along with the water pressure that has been applied onto it as well. So uh, this is one thing. And yeah, now what I do is I'll be directly hiding all the cases except conduit lining. So that is your concrete lining and on this con lining I have applied some water pressure yeah this is my water pressure that has been applied and if you want to apply water pressure manually you can directly go and you can apply manual water level so uh, from the origin it is my it might be 10 meters or it might be 100 meters so based on your uh, model you need to provide your water level I provided 10 meters of my water level and if you want to auto calculate it by the water level boundary if you provide any water level by yourself you can directly calculate the uh, means the software directly calculates according to the water level as well so as of now I just provided based on my uh, like uh, manually that is only 10 meters of my head so that is my pressure poor pressure head sorry sorry pressure head and then we'll see the results now Go to results, and in the very first stage, uh, this is my in situ stage that is only bedrock is present. So, this is my bedrock, and we don't have any dam in here. 
and you can find the in situ stresses in here and in the second case we got a dam and conduit so uh, we will be showing you the displacement no? this is your total displacement yeah you can see uh, all the displacement is like concentrated in your uh, near your uh, dam because the adjacent soil or adjacent hilly area or a, the settlement because of its or self it has been cleared by me it made zeroed by me but uh, uh, only of the self aid because of your dam is being shown to you now so this is how it looks like and uh, we can have a tx displacement that is your lateral direction y, y direction and this is your settlement so this is a settlement which we can obtain and the most important thing is I'll be hiding my bedrock and I will be showing you the different results from top to bottom on my dam yeah and now go to results we can have stresses so this uh, is my like let's say s maximum shear so that's my shear stress yeah this is how it looks like and the maximum is at the bottom so that's what uh, it actually should be and that is what it is that then that is okay so and now what we do is I'll be showing you some pore water pressure but actually pore water uh, the water level has not been assigned in this particular case and now what I will be showing you is I'll be showing you only conduit lining that is only lining of your uh, conduit that might be a concrete lining or a steel lining but in here I went for only concrete lining will show you the results on this conduit lining so what type of results you can get the forces in x direction so I'm just automating it I'll be providing you the continuous or let's say fridge so in y direction in xy direction so nothing but your torsional or uh, torsional force let's say bending moment in about y direction bending moment about x direction and I got bending moment about x way that is your torsional moment all the things because of the self weight of the soil or dam will be shown to you here shown uh, to you so that's what is being shown you can e actually extract these results and provide to your structural engineer and he can uh, uh, go for a, like a design of this particular concrete lining and this is one case and uh, because of the water pressure that has been applied uh, onto your conduit this is your water pressure you need to apply you need to provide the pressure head that is being applied and uh, you can get to have the exact uh, results because of the sulfate of the dam and you can have the results because of your water pressure so nothing but your combination and now what I'll be showing you is I'll be showing you the strain now so the so solid strain so it is already concentrated in the bottom so what I do is I'll be hiding my bedrock again so you can see so this is my strain equivalent strain it refers my it means the failure zones that are being developed and this is also equivalent plastic zone so this particular area is like going into uh, my plastic zone because uh, because of uh, like an, a stress transfer or some other case but here you can see here this is my case this is what it looks like because the huge variation of my hilly area from here to here uh, I can find so that's why I can find the most uh, stress concentrated in here stress concentration in there and this is all about your uh, conduit uh, the stress analysis the deformation stresses everything you can find let's say I will be showing you the deformations once again the settlement uh, this is your settlement I can have a maximum value I can uh, show you the minimum values so these are my settlements these are my shell element forces the shell element is nothing but your concrete lining and we got an uh, strengths that is your solid strengths and we got your solid stresses as well so these are your solid stresses I'll be hiding all the other case so these are your solid stresses the principal stress the shear stress the normal stresses uh, even the plastic status we'll see the plastic status yeah here you can see uh, most of your uh, 
uh, like uh, downstream end and uh, some part of your upstream end and some hilly areas are going into your plastic zone. So that's what it is inferring us. So that's what we can infer from here. And yeah, this is uh, here. And apart from this, you can even run the linear analysis. So here I also ran the linear analysis for a conservative zone, but uh, this uh, could be more conservative. We, it is better to go for nonlinear static analysis because we got a Mokulum material and we got an internal core with the modified cam clay. So that's it's better to go for nonlinear material other than your linear material. Yeah, so this is your linear static results. So now it's uh, done and now I'll be showing you with uh, time history analysis. So this is your time history analysis. So since uh, I have provided some seismic uh, load, uh, I have provided an L center day load. I will be showing you those loads now. I already I also applied an uh, free field boundary conditions. So nothing but your infinite boundary conditions. So go to model again. I'll be hiding my plane free field. So that's my free field boundary condition. I'm hiding it. And again, this is the same model, the bedrock, internal curve, and we got a dam casing and we got a filters as well. And now in on to this, uh, I, have, I went for a dynamic analysis. I'll be showing you the different dynamic load that has been applied. So go to ground acceleration. I applied an L centro, that's a horizontal case. So this is a time history function. Your time versus your value. The value is nothing but with respect to your G. That is nothing but normalized acceleration. And in, in here, if you are, uh, as I said, I, we are having some database for your earthquake as well. So we go to earthquake in here. And in the earthquake, uh, we, we have the earthquake acceleration record. So for most of the like well-known earthquakes that has been occurred till now, are already present in the software you can choose the particular case and if you go for amplitude scale and a time scale it let's say one so you will be having this particular earthquake analysis earthquake developed because of the record which we have so that's uh, uh, that's why I directly chosen the earthquake data from my database and now uh, what I have applied is uh, applied sulfate and then I applied the boundary conditions so this is my fixed bottom so a uh, bottom will be fixed for me and this is my plane free fill so these are my plane free fill conditions so what we do is we directly run the analysis so I have already run the analysis and again I was telling you about the procedure for uh, like dynamic analysis we get the results from the uh, your uh, uh, 1D ground response analysis. So this is where we get the 1D ground response analysis. So here we got a free field analysis. So just go to free field analysis. You will be having separate uh, tab developed here. This is nothing but the uh, software such as your shake and uh, your deep soil. So we go for a new. Uh, we just press OK. This is your 1D ground response analysis. Uh, you'll be having some damping curves developed like this. Use your damping curve equation, or let's say we got a database. So just go to database. You can apply for a clay material or for another material. Just press OK. This is your damping curve, and this is your uh, uh, sorry. This is your shear modulus curve, and this is your damping curve. And based on uh, uh, the points and number of layers specified by you, it will be showing you the variation from top to bottom uh, for different layers. So this is only for one layer. So that's how we run the ground response analysis and uh, we need to set all the materials and we it's an outcropping motion or non-outcropping. We need to decide based on the uh, site conditions and then we apply it. So once you are done with the 1D ground response analysis, you will be having uh, your uh, uh, damping ratios and uh, your uh, shear modulus. So once you get the damping ratios, what you do is you go to materials. So I have already specified some uh, considerations and I applied a filter of like, a, um, sorry, let's go to 
general properties and we got a damping ratio. I applied a 5% uh, for the filters. But if you go for 1D ground response analysis and you apply some, uh, let's say, uh, L center earthquake, it will be showing you the converted another damping ratio. So that can be applied in here. Uh, similarly, for all the different layers, you will be having different damping ratios that can be directly obtained and that can be directly inputted in here. So this is your damping ratios and this is your shear modulus. So what are shear modulus that are being that is being obtained can be applied over here. So this is about input and uh, once you are done with all of your 1D ground response analysis. So what we should do is we need to go for eigenvalue analysis. So I have run the eigenvalue analysis and I considered uh, some like around 200 mode shapes. So I'll be showing you the model participation factor accordingly for the same. Yeah, so um, sorry for that. Yeah, this is here and I'll be showing you the model participation factor and I got like around 78% of my model participation. So which is fine and good because in structures uh, we can get a complete 90% but in soil it is very rare to get your complete uh, uh, your uh, like uh, model participation because of several issues. So from this model participation what we found is uh, we found that in a one two one one two and one one three modes we got more participation so this would be acting like our natural frequencies so according to your frequencies of one one two and one one three modes we will be considering our natural frequencies so this here one one two one 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 three and uh, here for one one two and one one three we need to calculate our periods. So we got a 200 modes for 112 and 113. We need to calculate our period and this can be converted back to frequency and that will be update, applied onto my time history analysis. Go to edit and we got a time history in here. Go to dynamic and this is my damping method. So I'll be applying my frequencies in here that has been obtained from eigenvalue analysis that is 0.41 and 2.01. So damping ratio of 0.05. If you're having different damping ratios for different materials, when you apply uh, using a one degree ground response analysis and get a different damping ratios for different layers that can be directly applied in here. But uh, in the for the same, but in this current model, I applied only 5% for all the like uh, material models. So that's why I'm having my stiffness and mass proportional coefficients same for all the materials. And that is how my damping method is. And I have applied my time step as well. So this is my time steps. So this is very important case. Uh, I have only considered for 10 seconds. You can go for complete uh, like your earthquake. So you can have uh, how much amount of uh, variation for from time to time. But for this particular case, I can get value still 10 seconds only. Now we'll go and see the results. So time history analysis has been completely run now. So what I do is I go to analysis case. I will select uh, either a linear time history or a non-linear time history. In linear, we got direct and modal as well. So I need to select uh, the particular analysis. In this particular case, I ran a linear time history analysis. Uh, I'll be showing you results now. So this is your linear time history analysis result data. So at each and every increment of my time, I can find the results. I have divide, divided into 100 increments for 10 seconds. So I got 100 uh, uh, means data for 100 seconds. And now I will see your uh, results. So we got minimum among all, maximum among all, and absolute maximum among all. So what we do is we go for 100 increment and we will see the relative displacements, let's say let's say tx displacement double click on it and you can you can have something like this but it is better to have an uh, your time versus your displacement graph for your time history analysis so how to obtain that graph go to multi-step iso value surface go to linear time history sorry not multi-step sorry we, we need to go to extract function let's say i'm interested in uh, like time history analysis, I go to relative displacements, I go to TX displacement, 
I will select all except my maximum minimum and absolute maximum and I will select a particular area let's say this particular node I selected this node and I will ask it to show a table and this is my table when I right click on it I can export to my Excel or else I can ask it to show a graph and this is how the graph is yeah because of the variation of load that's say your uh, like your earthquake load you can have a displacement of that particular node in this fashion uh, it is varying accordingly with respect to time this is your time and this is for 10 seconds and similarly uh, you can even get an accelerations as well so relative accelerations you go for relative acceleration and again let's say table for the same particular node I'm going for accelerations as well so this is how the acceleration is uh, looking like and if you are having total relate to your if you are having let's say TX this is how I can get this is my acceleration with re this is my, uh, TX along X direction and this is my time value my uh, y-axis is my acceleration and my x-axis is my time value so I can get a graph something like this you can even export these uh, graphs and even export the complete table back to your Excel as well so this is one case and also you can get an uh, velocities so based on the motion you can even find the velocities this is how you are getting the velocities and you can find the solid stresses as well this is all in the last step and this is how it is uh, this is how we can run a uh, linear time history or nonlinear time history analysis and you can have the results like solid stresses relative accelerations and uh, normal accelerations relative velocities and uh, normal velocities displacement and relative displacement and uh, similarly you can run for any type of your models uh, both your linear time history or nonlinear time history and uh, you can get to have the results as I was showing you about uh, your a 3d PDF report this is your 3d PDF report so I will ask the software to go for my mesh my model and only displacement of maximum let's say only TX displacement so I will save it somewhere So the software is developing the 3D PDF uh, means whatever 3D PDF that is uh, developed will be shown to you now. So uh, in the meantime if you're having any queries please let me know. Uh, I'll be sharing you this particular demonstration video as well. The introduction uh, I'll be waving it off and I'll be sharing you the recording for the uh, like demonstration. If you're having any queries please let me know so the 3d pdf report is being generating i think uh, many of you can able to hear uh, what i'm saying i think you can able to listen me right some of them are struck with the video but they are able to listen me right yeah uh, this is how the 3d PDF report looks like actually you can uh, change here you can how, how how you handle it in the software you can handle similarly in the 3d PDF as well and you can have uh, different uh, options like uh, sorry this is your transparent all the other options you can have your shadings and you can even disable your content and the tools like rotate zoom and all the other cases uh, I'm just showing you all the options
and now whatever the results that has been exported will be shown to you so this is a meshed model you can see how the mesh is being so this is a mesh which can able to you can share this particular 3d pdf report with your engineer or with your uh, fellow engineer or colleague or whoever you want to be uh, so they can able to see their model and how it is being behaved in the real time like how i am showing you and this is a result table and you can see an uh, legend and you can see the results so this is a tx relative translation and uh, this is uh, for the particular ta linear time history analysis and tx translations and uh, similarly you can able to generate uh, your own uh, like uh, any sets of i have just selected only relative displacement and if you are having interest in other values you can select all all the same and the software will develop a 3d pdf report it will be shared to uh, it it can be shared with any number of members so uh, you can use it as a normal 3d pdf normal pdf report so that's how that's it from my end